Right guys, welcome back to the channel and I am excited about these books. Of course, a massive, massive thank you to Games Workshop for allowing us to preview uh, these two very, very good books uh, indeed. Before we move on to them though, there is two videos out today. One of them will review Codex Chaos Space Marines 2. The other one will review Vigilus uh, Blaze. So if you want to see what is in both of them, Go and check out both videos. Uh, before we go any further though guys, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that has supported the channel over the last four years. It's unbelievably only our fourth birthday this week. Uh, so thank you to everybody that has supported. Make sure you are subscribed uh, on YouTube. Give us a follow on Twitch uh, for hobby streams uh, as they happen. Uh, if you're interested in any merchandise, click the link to Spreadshirt down below. Check out Battle Bunker and Demonscapes who sponsor the channel as well. And of course, check out the darkartisan.co.uk. Right guys, so let's crack on with Chaos Space Marines Part 2. This is brilliant. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, why do I want this? Well, some may not. So this is an honest review. If you are happy to carry both Vigilus books, the Shadow Spear book, and Chaos Space Marines, along with the FAQs and stuff as well, fine, you don't need this, if you're happy carrying everything. I don't mind, because all of my stuff is here on the shelf behind me. However, uh, if you want everything in one place, this is the book that you want. So if you've missed out on a couple of books, uh, or you just want everything in one place, then it is definitely worth picking this up, rather than flicking between Codex, two Vigilus books and so forth. So it is great for that. If you're new to Chaos Space Marines, make sure that you get this one, uh, part two, not the original one, because if you get the original one, you're still gonna need the other books and everything to get everybody's updated rules, data sheets, uh, and so forth. So what's in this book? Well, all of the Shadow Spear uh, models are in there. So the uh, Lord of Possession, the Venom Crawler, things like that as well. You've also got Abaddon, uh, who's been updated. You've got Harkin in here as well, uh, as well as the new um, Legion traitor uh, traits and Warlord things and everything as well. You've also got um, all of the new terrain. So you've got the, the new Skull Altar, I think it was, for Corn, uh, And you've also got the Gate as well. All of it is in this one book, which is very, very good for Chaos Space Marine players. Now, if you're interested in Chaos Space Marine Battle Reports, I do have Chaos Space Marines. Not a lot of them, but I am working on them. So give me a couple of weeks, guys, uh, and you can, I promise you there'll be some battle reports out. Uh, and Sarge is also going to be helping out as well because he's got quite a decent sized collection of Marines. So all of the pictures in there in the front of it are all being updated. All of the uh, fluff pages and everything have got all of the new um, all the new units and everything in there. Now I'm going to come straight out and say, Cultists are 5 points, Marines are 13. It is what it is. This may change in the next week or two, depending on what happens with the um, uh, the big FAQ, which they've said will be coming in April as a result of Adepticon. But, that's not... That's by the by. So, what else is in here? Well... I'm going to compare them as we go through because I haven't read a lot of these new rules and there is a lot of changes, guys, uh, which I'm quite excited about. One thing I want to check is if cultists have the Heretic Astartes keyword, which I'm actually going to check now um, because I know it makes a massive, massive difference to a lot of things. Uh, where are we at? Elite Troops. Nope, they've still got Heretic Astartes, so it's still worth the five points, uh, in my opinion. So the other major change is Obliterators. They are now 65 points with the Flesh Metal Guns, which is almost half what they are in Shadow Spear. I know a lot of people uh, didn't like the 115 points. It was expensive, but 65 points each? Wow, that is awesome, and I think you're going to see a lot of Obliterators. The other thing that uh, has changed, and you've probably seen uh, the previews for this weapon already, is Havoc's got access to a new heavy weapon, which is the uh, was it the Reaper Chain Gun. It is heavy eight, 
strength 5, minus 1, 1 damage. It's 20 points, but it's basically a better heavy bowler. So you've got 5 more shots than a heavy bowler, and it's double the cost. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's only range 24, though. But I think these are worth it. And at range 24, you're probably thinking, why? Well, that's because Havocs have got a new rule uh, called Stabilisation Talents. Uh, the unit can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering penalty to their hit rolls. Wow. Like, that's massive. You stick four of them on uh, a squad of Havocs, right? And then use Endless Cacophony to shoot again. It is is going to be absolutely brutal. I mean, that's what, 32 shots at strength 5? Uh, and they're not even going to cost that much. You, you're looking at a little over 100 points um, for 24, 32 shots at strength 5 minus 1. Uh, of course, have a lord nearby, you can re-roll, use Veterans of the Long War, you've got an extra plus one to wound, and then you're shooting again. Uh, it, Havocs are going to be good, and I think you're going to see quite a few Havocs in uh, upcoming lists. So, I'm going to go over the Legion traits, um, and Warlord traits, Relics, and Prayers. Yep, you heard that correctly, Prayers, which I don't think was in the previous Codex. Uh, I'm not a massive uh, Chaos player, so please forgive me if I do get a couple of things uh, wrong with this. Uh, Demonic Ritual looks to be the same. It's still got to be a Chaos character to do it. Death to the False Emperor, of course, is there. Uh, and Black Legion. And I've just realised that all the Allegiance traits are in the back. So the layout of the Codex hasn't changed at all, guys. Everything is still in pretty much the same order. Uh, so all your Warlord traits... Uh, and weapon stats and everything will be at the back. So. Oh. Hmm. Uh, me and Mortals Cults do not gain the Legion trait. But they've still got the key word. Uh, the inclusion of Fabius Bile or Fallen Units in a detachment does not prevent uh, that detachment from gaining their Legion trait. However, Fabius Bile and Fallen Units can never themselves benefit from the Legion trait. So it's nice that they can kind of slot in there as well. Um, I don't think any of these have really changed. So Black Legion, for example, I'd want your leadership. Um, and if you advance, you treat all of your rapid fire weapons as assault weapons. Cool. Uh, Iron Warriors, it's been previewed on the community site already. Nothing's changed. Renegade Chapters, uh, units with this trait can advance and charge in the same turn. Now, I don't think that they are included in here. So I will, I will double check as we go through, guys. Um, Night Lords, uh, must subtract one from the leadership. Uh, Emperor's Children, fight first. Alpha Legion, subtract one from hit rolls. Uh, word Bearers, reroll field morale tests. Uh, and World Eaters, you should make one additional attack. So, everything's pretty much the same. Stratagems, I'm actually going to have both books here, and I want to compare what has actually changed. So, let's have a look. Ah, yes, that me Immortals rule is new, guys, for the uh, cultists. So, let's have a look. Demon Shell, Gifts of Chaos, Beseech the Chaos Gods, Blasphemous Machines, Chaos Boon, uh, Veterans of the Long War. I'm just seeing if the CP values have changed. Fury of Corn. Ah, that's new. Or is it? No, they've just moved it to place. Uh, Grandfather's Blessings, that's there. Endless Cacophony, that's there. Uh, the Great Sorcerer, yep. Tide of Traitors. It does stay in that now, and, and, and the only reason I'm looking at this is because I know this was changed. It does stay in the stratagem. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. So... With the stratagem wording changed, if you want the cards with the um, with the new wording and everything on, it's definitely worth getting the new deck of cards. Uh, I myself won't be. Um, I'm I'm pretty savvy uh, with a lot of rules, uh, so I'm I'm not going to pick the new ones up. Uh, Linebreaker bombardment, uh, kill shot, demon forge. Yep, and Chaos Familiar. 
So yeah, the only th thing that I can see glancing there, guys, is Tide of Traitors has changed. And I've just realised Praise is not new at all. Or is it? Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong books. Yes, Praise is new. Uh, Flak Missile, Fire Frenzy, Forward Operatives, Dark Pact, Iron Within, Iron Without, Scorn of Sorcery, Excess of Violence, In Midnight Clad, and Let the Galaxy Burn. So no CP value changes, guys. Uh, and most of it does look to be the same. However, prayers to the Dark Gods. This is new. So, uh, before the battle, be, uh, before the battle, generate prayers for priests that can chant prayers from the prayer for the Dark, dark Gods. Using the table below, you can either roll a d6 to generate the prayers, uh, or you can select one. Mark of Chaos prayers. Uh, if your priest belongs to a Chaos God, he can gain their prayer. So you've got six standard prayers and then one for each of the four gods. Uh, and it's worth pointing out as well, uh, I did only notice one when I had a quick flick earlier, but we'll have a look. Uh, Dark Apostles are priests, um, which I think are, are the, kind of the equivalent of chaplains. So we've got Benediction of Darkness. Uh, oh, sorry, and uh, these go off on a 3+, plus, uh, and only one model in your army can attempt to chant this prayer once um, per battle round. So it's, it's like stratagems or sighted powers, basically, but you can only attempt to do it once. Uh, if the prayer is heard, pick a friendly legion unit within six, subtract one from hit rolls, uh, the target it with ranged weapons. Now, obviously, that can stack, for example, um, with any other sighted powers or stratagems or buffs that you may have as well. Uh, Litany of Despair. Uh, if this prayer is heard, your opponent rolls 2d6. Uh, discarding the lost result each time you make a morale test for a unit within six inches of this priest. It's handy. Uh, Omen of Potency. If this prayer is heard, add three to the priest's attacks. In addition, if this prayer is heard, the priest's melee weapons have an armor penetration of minus four. That's pretty decent. Uh, warp, slight, warp Sight Plea. Um, a unit within six inches of the priest adds one to the hit rolls for attack made by ranged weapons. So it's like prescience. But because it's a prayer, you can't stop it um, with psychic powers, which is very, very good. Uh, it's massive if you play Blades of Corn in Age of Sigma, and it's a massive, massive thing here not being able to stop it. Uh, if the prayer, uh, sorry, Soul Terror por Portent, uh, if the prayer is heard, uh, pick one friendly Legion unit within six, add one to wound rolls made by melee weapons. That's pretty good. That, that might actually stack with Veterans of the Long War. Yeah, you could add two to your um, to your wound rolls in melee, which is massive. That's really massive, and of course you could go the um, was the plus one to hit. No. Uh, and then illusory supplication. Uh, if this prayer is heard, friendly legion models have a five plus invulnerable save whilst they're within six inches of the priest. That is also very, very good. Uh, <clears throat> for the gods, we've got Wrathful uh, Entreaty. Corn Priest only. If this prayer is heard, add two to the priest's strength. Um, the Zinch one. Uh, if this prayer is heard, the priest regains D3 lost wounds. Note that unlike other prayers whose effects last only until the end of the battle round, wounds regained from this prayer are not lost again at the end of the battle round. Uh, feculent Beseechment. Uh, add two to the priest's toughness. That's uh, for Nurgle. Uh, blissful devotion. Um, the priest can advance and charge. That's all right. We'll have to have to have a look and see who is priest when we go through the the units. Uh, Dark hereticus discipline. <clears throat> Let's have a look. See what's changed. We've got infernal gears. We've got death hex. Uh, Gift of chaos. Prescience. Diabolical Strength. None of the values have changed and we've got Warp Time. Uh, the Zinch one, Weaver of Fates is the same. Miasma of Pestilence is the same. And Delightful Agonies is the same as well. Slight wording changes, guys. Basically same when, it's, um, when you can use it. We've also got the Malefic Discipline as well, which is, of course, for the Master of Possessions, uh, which was in the um, Shadow Spear Codex. 
I'm not going to go over these um, because I've already covered them in that codex review. So go and check that out if you want to know more about the malefic discipline. Uh, Artifacts of Chaos, let's have a look and see if there's any differences. Uh, let's have a look. So we've got the Talisman of Burning Blood, the Eye of Zinch, Intoxicating Elixir, Pus Cleaver, Axe of Blind Fury, uh, the Black Mace, the Murder Sword, uh, the Eye of Night, the Cursed Crozius, Flesh Metal Exoskeleton Brass, Collar of Borgaster. Uh, Blade of Hydra, Claws of the Black Hunt, and the Bliss Giver. So no changes that I can see there. Warlord Traits, uh, Eternal Vendetta, Flames of Spite, Unholy Fortitude, Hatred Incarnate, Lord of Terror, Exalted Champion. Um, and as far as I can see, it doesn't look as though the original ones have changed, the one for each Legion has changed either. So... That is all of your, your faction specific stuff. Now I need to see. Yeah, the specific renegade stuff isn't in this book, unfortunately. So if you want specific renegade stuff, you will need to pick up Vigilus Part 2. Right, so the business. What you guys really want to know is what has changed with the units. Now they've already previewed the Abaddon stat line. Uh, so everyone knows he's got an extra wound and an extra strength. But What's changed with these rules wise? Well, the Talon of Horror shooting is still the same. Uh, and Drachnion is uh, it's a flat 3 damage now uh, instead of D3. But you still have to roll to see if the demon weapon basically does any damage to you instead of fighting. Um, and the Talon of Horus is now minus 4 instead of minus 3. So very, very cool. Uh, you still get two additional command points. He's still got four up in vulnerable saving, he's still half the damage, and reroll hits for all friendly Black Legion units within six. Um, automatically pass morale and teleport strike. Um, so, as far as I can see, basically, he got flat damage, he got better AP, one more strength, and one more wound. Pretty good. Um, and he's not even that expensive point wise either. Uh, how many was he before? Let's have a quick look. So he was 240 previously, right? And I'm pretty sure he's either the same or less now. Where are we at? HQ. Yeah, he's 240, but he got a lot better. Uh, we've got Harkin World Claimers rules, uh, which I won't cover. Uh, but it does include the change that they made uh, to his rules as a result of the FAQ. Because I know they changed it. Uh, and then they end up changing it back. So this is now the correct war scroll. Uh, Demon Princes look pretty much the same from what I can tell. Uh, Khan of Atreia, Fabius Bile. Uh, has Cypher changed? Let's have a look at Cypher. So... Five wounds. Nope, everything looks pretty much the same with Cypher. Apart from he's got an extra rule. Uh, so he's still got Blazing Weapons. Uh, no One's Puppet is the new rule. Cypher cannot use the Demonic Ritual ability, even though he has a Chaos and Character keyword. Yeah, that's it. Fair enough. And let's have a look. Master of Possessions rules are in here. Uh, and who is Priestwise? Master of Executions is a new character actually, and he's in the uh, Vigilus book as well. Um, once per five phase, you can reroll hit wound, hit roll, wound roll, or damage roll for an attack made by this model that targets a character. After an enemy has completed all their charge moves, this model can perform an heroic intervention if it was within three of enemy models or within six of enemy characters. If this model is within six of enemy characters, it can move up to six inches when performing the heroic intervention. Um, he's okay. He's just basically. He is a HQ choice, but he's basically a character killer. Uh, so he's weapon skill 2 plus, uh, 5 attacks, uh, and just power armor. He's basically, um, he's not a lord. Um, and he's got an axe of dismemberment, which is times 2 strength, minus 3, d3, 
but if you make a wound roll of a six up the unit suffers a mortal wound in addition so obviously if you give him um world eaters he's gonna have six attacks on the charge uh, as well which is pretty cool uh, he is not a priest however um i'm just seeing who else is the priest yeah dark apostle has the priest keyword and we've also got dark disciples as well uh, so the Dark Apostles basically gained um, the Priest keyword. Uh, everything else has stayed the same though. Uh, so basically it knows the Dark Zealotry prayer and one prayer from the prayers to the Dark Gods, which is what I covered earlier. At the start of each battle round, you can pick one of the prayers this model knows and roll a d6. On a 3 plus, the prayer is heard. The prayer takes effect until the end of that battle round. The same prayer cannot be chanted more than once per battle round by any model in your army whether it is heard or not. Dark Zealotry is a standard prayer. If this prayer is heard, you can reroll hit rolls in the fight phase for attacks made by friendly legion units whilst they're within six. So that's what they've done to the Dark Apostle. I think it's pretty cool. Dark Disciples um, are basically cultists. Um, strength and toughness three, one wound, five up save, uh, and they've got close combat weapons. Only one unit of Dark Disciples can be included in your army for each Dark, dark Apostle in your army. Dark Disciple units do not take up a slot uh, in detachment that includes any Legion Dark Apostles. Whilst this unit is within two inches of a Dark Apostle, enemy units can only shoot this unit if it is the closest enemy unit. Ignore characters with a wound characteristic of less than 10. So that's alright. And they've got Relic of Corruption. Whilst any Legion Dark Disciple units are within two of any friendly Dark Apostles, add one to the dice roll to see if the prayer chanted by the Dark Apostle is heard. That makes it on a 2 plus. That is actually pretty cool, uh, and I like that a lot. Now, one of the fantastic new additions to this book, however, is the Lord Discordant, uh, which is the new Spider Crawler model that you've probably seen previewed uh, on the community page. And all of his rules are here, guys. Now, I'll tell you straight away, he's got 12 wounds. You can shoot him. Based on his wound characteristics, you can shoot him. Um, so, a Lord Discordant on Hellstalker is a single model armed with an auto cannon. Bull Pistol, Impaler Chain Glaive, Mecha Tendrils, Frag Grenades and Crack Grenades, as Hellstalker is armed with a Bladed Limbs and Tail, and a Technovirus Injector. So there's a lot of stuff here, guys. Um, he gets additional attacks, uh, depending on how many wounds he's taken, uh, and his movement does go up or down as well. Now, a lot of the rules have been um, previewed already on the community page. I know the Aura of Discord uh, and Spirit Thief rules were... He does have a fire up in run, he does get a wound back every turn. Now the <clears throat> let's have a look. So you can replace the auto cannon with a bale flamer, and the hell stalker can replace its techno virus injector with a magma cutter. So a techno virus injector is strength plus four, uh, which makes it strength eight, minus four d3. After the Lord Discordant has made his close combat attacks, you can attack with his hell stalker. Uh, make a single attack using this weapon profile. In addition, to the bladed limbs and tail. Each time a wound roll for an attack made with this weapon is successful when targeting a vehicle, the unit suffers d3 mortal wounds in addition to its normal damage. Uh, so the bladed limbs and tail, so you get one attack with the Technovirus Injector, but then you get the uh, bladed limbs attack. After the Lord Discordant makes his close combat attacks, you can attack with his Hellstalker. Make a number of additional attacks as shown in the damage table above using the weapon's profile. So he starts with five, drops to four, drops to three. Uh, and of course you've got magma cutters as well, which is um, pistol one, uh, strength eight, minus four, three damage. Um, the Lord Discordant can replace his auto cannon with a bale flamer. It's a standard auto cannon. It's a standard bale flamer. Um, yeah. Uh, he's got two extra attacks with these mecha tendrils. Uh, and he's, of course he's got the impaler chain glaive as well. Um, Pretty cool, it's strength times two when you charge instead of um, uh, instead of plus two. So he's pretty cool, guys. Um, he is actually a warp smith as well. So, you know, I think Iron Warriors are going to see a lot of these guys. Chaos Space Marines is next. Uh, and of course, if you saw the um, Shadow Spear rules, uh, it does specify one squad of ten. You can take one aspiring champion and four marines um there's no changes like i said guys to the points 
The Spiring Champion can change uh, his bow pistol and bow gun and take weapons from the equip uh, champion equipment list. Uh, any Marines can replace their bow gun with a chain sword. Uh, any Marines may replace their bow pistol with a plasma pistol, replace his bow gun with, sorry, one Marine can, uh, can take a, a weapon from the special heavy weapon list. If the unit numbers 10 or more models, uh, in addition, a Chaos Space may replace bow gun with one special or heavy. So you can take one per five, Special or heavy weapons, you can take a second one if the unit is 10, uh, and you can take a um, Chaos Icon as well. Other than that, no further changes, guys, other than the fact that you can actually take smaller units. Um, as far as I can see, it doesn't look as though uh, cultists have changed, other than, of course, being five points. Blood Letters, the rules people have all probably already seen, but they have been updated. It'll be interesting to find out. Um, if this change impacts the um, Demon Codex, which I think it will, because I think they're listed in Vigilus. Um, I'm not going to go over the other um, the other demons. Terminators. Uh, Terminators are 26 points without war gear. Um, and any model can replace his combi bolter with a combi weapon. Uh, you can replace a chain axe with a Terminator melee weapon. Uh, and any number of models can replace the combi bolt uh, and chain axe with a pair of lightning claws. For every five in the unit, one Terminator may replace his combi bolt with a heavy flavor or Reaper auto cannon. You can take a, an icon. Um, other than that, not many changes to that, guys. He is, of course, have the Greater Possessed in here as well as the Normal Possessed. Again, the Greater Possessed are covered in the Shadow Spear review. Um, much of everything else is just basically tightening up on words so you've got of course rubric marines, corn berserkers, plague marines and so forth. Um, Fallen are also in here as well uh, and I don't know if they've changed much. So any model can replace the bow gun with a chain sword and up to four Fallen may choose one of the following. Uh, replace a bow pistol with plasma pistol, uh, combi weapon or special weapon list. Uh, two lightning claws or from the melee weapons list one additional form may replace his bulk with a special or heavy weapon and the champion can take from the champions list as well yep so nothing has changed with the fallen uh, raptors from what I can see again pretty much the same thing uh, warp talons again uh, from what I can tell they are very much the same uh, obliterators do have the new profile you'd be pleased to know uh, which of course are covered in shadow spear as well so I'll, again I won't go over them uh, and then we've got all the normal heavy supports from the defiler uh, model fiend forge fiend and so forth but we also have the venom crawler as well uh, it does not come with any other weapons guys it is stuck with the slow soul flare tendrils and excruciator cannon as well so there's no um, it doesn't look like there's going to be a multi-purpose kit uh, or multi pose kit coming out for that, unfortunately. Um, we've got the corn um, scenery piece as well. No, we don't, not in here. That's going to be in Vigilus. So there is actually a couple of things in Vigilus that you may want, but we do have the Noctilith crown. Uh, it is a fortification. Uh, it's toughness 8 with 14 wounds and a 3 up save, uh, and a ballistic skill of 4 plus. It's got lashing warp energies. Um, Pistol D6, strength 7, minus 2, 2 damage. So, you know what? It's not bad. Um, it can kill a marine or two, probably. Um, so, Psyker's attempting to manifest powers within 24 inches of this uh, will suffer perils of the warp on any double result rolled for a Psyker test rather than only a double 1 or a double 6. Chaos Psykers are not affected. Loathsome Aura. Uh, Chaos units have a 5 in vulnerable save whilst they're holding within 6 inches of this model. In addition, you can reroll sighting tests for Chaos Cycles whilst they're within 6 of the model. At the start of the second and third battle rounds, the range of both of these auras is increased by 3 to 9 inches and 12 inches in the third and subsequent battle round. That is phenomenal, guys. And this is 100 points. It's not... I don't think it's great, but I think if you're going very, very sighty heavy, it's, it's probably not bad. Um... And actually, you know what? It wouldn't be bad with Death Guard, I don't think. Because, you know, you've got a fair few psychers. Five have been vulnerable, say, followed by you discussing resilience. I think it's going to be pretty cool. 
Uh, it cannot move for any reason. It can't fight in the fight phase. And enemy models automatically hit it in the fight phase. And it explodes on a 6 doing D6 mortal wounds. For 100 points, it ain't bad. Um, and that is pretty much the Codex, guys. It's nice that everything apart from the Renegade stuff is in here. I like it a lot. Um, I would pick it up if you're going to start collecting Chaos. If you've missed out on the two Vigilist books and you're not bothered about the Specialist detachments and stuff, get this Codex, guys. Um, I'm really, really excited about some of the new Chaos stuff. Like I said, we're painting up the uh, Shadow Spear stuff right now. Uh, and some of my worldies are going to get slightly repainted uh, so that we can play around with some of the Black Legion stuff. Uh, and of course the renegades and things as well so i will be getting more chaos on the channel very soon um but that is it for the for the codex uh, chaos space marines review guys thank you very much for listening make sure you are subscribed to the channel already and of course once again a massive thank you to games workshop uh for sending this out for us to cover but until the next time guys thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon <laughs>